Hello and welcome to Children's Chapel Online. We are part of St. Patrick's Episcopal Church located in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and we are also a part of the Episcopal Diocese of Oklahoma. We're very happy to have you here to worship with us today. It is the fourth Sunday in Lent. And so Lent is the season before Easter. And as we talked about probably the second Sunday in Lent, I believe, we cover our cruces, our crosses, um, and sometimes maybe pictures of Jesus uh, with a veil or a truel, uh, no, sorry, tool <laughs> is what it's called. Um, and I noticed last week in when Beth Canada joined us from Emmanuel Shawnee, she did her introduction at the altar of their church in Shawnee. And did you notice the veils over their crosses? They had a, one purple one and I think a couple of black ones. Take a look. Oops, looks like two black ones, one covering the cross behind the altar and the other covering, I'm guessing, a statue of Jesus. Hi, Beth. <laughs> I noticed that and I wanted to share that with you all. So if your church does the same thing, I know at St. Patrick's we have crossed the covered the crucifix. I keep saying crucifix and I mean the cross, the crucifer carries the cross. <laughs> I'm mixing up crucifer and cross. Um, and so I wanted to point that out. That happens in the season of Lent because we mask or veil over the cross because when does the cross come? Easter. That's right. And so we, it's a way of anticipating or looking forward to Easter. I'm excited for today, and I'm glad that you are here to worship with us. Let us begin by lighting our candle. If you recall, this is the candle I borrowed from my wife because I accidentally broke our other candle. Oopsie. And the candles never found its way back to my wife. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to buy her another one. <laughs> All right, let me quiet my mouth as we quiet our minds and open our hearts and our ears as we worship together. Dear Lord, our hearts are open to you. You know everything that we want, and we can't keep any secrets from you. Send your Holy Spirit to make our hearts clean so that we can love you and worship you forever. Amen. For our first song, we have Beth and Lauren Canada back with another new song. Woo! I love learning all of these new songs that are being introduced to us by others. This one is called The Servant Song. If you know it, sing along or like me, kind of get the rhythm of it and start singing as you get used to it, okay? Let's sing with Beth and Lauren. So this is the season of Lent and during the season of Lent we pray more, we give more money or more time, um, we help people more, we're just kinder, right? We should be because um, it helps us think about God and prepare ourselves for Easter. Um, and you know that makes me think about the servant song because it's good for us to be servants to each other and kind and be there for each other all the time. Let's sing that one. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Beth and Lauren. Beautiful song. All right, now it is time for our lesson. And as I mentioned, Becky Mosman is going to be giving it to us. And I've watched this one three times already. <laughs> it is an amazing lesson and it has so many beautiful truths and things that we can learn about. I recommend rewinding it and watching it a couple times when you can. So, all right, let's see what Becky has to teach us today. Some of this reading is hard to understand. Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, a leader in the temple. Before this reading, Nicodemus asked Jesus some questions, trying to understand how Jesus is interpreting the scriptures. Jesus says, If you don't believe the earthly things I tell you, you won't believe what I have to say about heaven. Then we come to this reading where Jesus goes on to say that God loved the world so much that he gave his son to save the world. In previous scriptures, we have seen God get angry with the way humans have treated each other and the earth. God made new covenants or special promises to the people, and the people keep messing up. In order for the people to have eternal life, life beyond the time they have on the earth, God sends Jesus, who is fully divine and fully human, to die and rise again. He dies for our sins to give us grace, forgiveness, and mercy to stay in God's fold. This is very hard to understand. Jesus also wants us to bring heaven on earth. Another way of looking at this passage is Jesus telling Nicodemus that people often do things that they aren't proud of, or is hurtful to other people. Perhaps it is something selfish. We all have things that we are embarrassed we've done or regret. Things we look back and say aren't our finest moments and certainly are not acts of love. Sometimes we lock away these things in our hearts. Jesus wants us to use the words and tools he's given us to build each other up and show God's love to others in order to bring heaven on earth now. Instead of focusing on what happens after death, love one another now. That is living into faith in God's love. Thank you so much for that beautiful telling of the gospel story. I loved that. I really, really did enjoy that. Thank you, Becky. If you remember, Becky showed us last time that she was on a couple of weeks ago about burying the Alleluia's. Do you remember that? And I have them back here in my box and uh, they're, they're, they're just wanting to come out, <laughs> but it's not quite Easter yet. <laughs> okay, let us continue our service by saying our creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Now, let us say our confession together. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. So for our special segment today, Becky is going to show us something very interesting. Hey, wait, can you guys see me? Um, hmm. Uh, oh, hey, how about now? Uh, hold on a second. Let me see if I can, I can, oh, it, uh. Uh, okay, <laughs> I was just 
finding an odd place around here. And Becky is going to show us some odd and interesting places in Trinity, Tulsa. Check it out. This is very cool. Hi, I'm Becky and welcome to Trinity this morning. I'm going to take you on a little tour of little known places at Trinity and some are pretty different that you wouldn't suspect that a big old church like Trinity has. I'm standing in Bishop Brook, which is one of our side chapels here at Trinity. And what I want to show you is this candle you can see right behind me um, and how we get to that. The candle is the Christ light and it's always lit when we have something in the ombre. And as you can see, because it hangs so high, the candle had to have a special hook to pull it down to be able to light it or extinguish it. Um, depending on if something was in the ombre. And the ombre is um, a little place that has um, the sacraments that are left over. So if there are sacraments left over and they are in that little place where Hannah touched, let me show us one more time, right there, then we make sure that that light is lit. Hi, well, a couple weeks ago, I showed you the columbarium and I'm gonna show you another little room that's in our main columbarium that's within Trinity's building. And there's a fun little hidey place in here too. So this is the other room. You see stained glass. You see all the names on the wall. And then back in this little corner, there is this little Hi. hidey space. And Hannah is in here to show you um, nice spider web there, but yeah, it is just a crazy crawl space that is one of the funny places that old buildings have. Pretty neat, huh? Our next adventure is into Trinity's sub-basement as we go down these steep stairs, so watch your step. sacristy and as you can guess there are vestments here so I'm gonna show you what are in some of these drawers. Hannah is standing by the drawers where we have stoles of various colors. Um, some are more decorative and others match the colors of our liturgical season. You can see the advent and the green ones. Um, for ordinary time. Something that's really cool in here is this safe. And inside, see it's actually a safe, that's pretty cool, metal door, is that it keeps all of our baptismal records in it. And Hannah's daughter, Cassie, she's going to show us Cassie's. There she is. And she was baptized. Very, very cool. We're in a stairwell that is um, in one of the older parts of Trinity's building, and there is this little storage area. Um, not even sure what we have in there, but you can see it's just a storage cabinet, one of these little hidey places that is um, in old buildings in Trinity's. Welcome to the archives at Trinity. You can see behind me there are a ton of boxes and file cabinets and of course a working desk for Ed Rowling who 
is our archivist and then a shelf with other books. And this contains all the records of Trinity, but like more than just like records, it's newspaper clippings and photographs and all kinds of details that is part of Trinity's history. And so we have someone who keeps a record of it and organizes it and helps us find things when we're looking for things in our past. All right, so this is an apartment that um, is at Trinity and it's again in the older part of the building. And this is where, you can see here's a bathroom. Um, this is where um, the curates who were at the church used to live, they would live on site and so they would live here. And for a number of years, there were people who did that here too, but we haven't had some of them here for a long time. So this would be like a kitchen or dining area and this would be a kitchen. For a number of years we used it as storage and you can see we've had water damage and stuff like that. But it's still kind of a cool, interesting space. Okay, so you can see we have a lot of stained glass up here. And from the balcony, um, these last two panels, um, we can see this is where they tell um, the story where Jesus dies and he descends dies on the cross and descends into hell. And you can see some famous people from history right there in that blue section. Do you see Hitler right there? Yeah? So, descends and then comes back up and is the resurrected Christ. So, descends into hell and then is resurrected. It's pretty cool, huh? Did you enjoy that? <laughs> Trinity is a huge, huge church. And I looked it up and it was built in 1926. That was a really long time ago. So they're gonna come up on their 100 year anniversary in about five years. So very neat. You know, I, had to, I thought about it while I was watching that. I was thinking there is a game that our youth at St. Patrick's play pretty sure all youth all over the diocese play called Sardines and Trinity Tulsa would be an awesome place to play the game Sardines. It's kind of like they describe it as kind of like reverse hide and seek where one person hides, everyone looks, and then when you find the person, you hide with them. It's a really fun game and we love to play that with our youth group Spy at St. Patrick's. For our second song, I've got a bit of a fun one for us. Okay, I told you it was going to be a fun song, and it is. It's Father Abraham, but I am going to bring someone in to sing it with you, okay? You ready? Here we go. Hey, Justin told me to come here and sing my song with you. Here we go. I had many sons, many sons had I. Okay, that version doesn't seem to work. Let, let's just do the old lyrics, okay? Here we go. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord right on. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right arm, left arm. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so were you. So let's just praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right leg. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so were you. 
So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, chin up. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, <laughs> right leg, left leg, chin up, turn around. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, chin up, turn around, sit down. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm like 800 years old or something like that. That's hard. I bet you guys did a great job. Good job. Wait. What? Say the Lord's Prayer. What was that? Speak up, Sonny. Lord's Prayer. Oh, Justin wanted me to tell you, now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. It's so great to have you here with us and so many people, teachers around the diocese like Beth and Becky and uh, Mother Kirsten and then Lisa and Adrian and Witt, so many people coming together so that we can all worship together. It's just great to have experiencing experiences of new songs, seeing odd and interesting places and just seeing how others teach around the diocese. You know, the church is not just a building, but it's the people. We are the church, and this is a great place to come to see all of the church working together to worship together with you. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that school is going well and the weather's getting so beautiful outside. I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope to see you here next week. Now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Won't you